G'day. Glenn Morris here again from the Smart Energy Lab. And today is all about learning how to correctly label your installation to ASNZS 4777 Part 1 2024 edition. So yep, it's another tech quickie and we're gonna rock it through it. So will you be able to pass your next CR audit? Yeah, to 2024 edition of 4777 Part 1? Because it will be enforced fully within six months. So make sure you're up to speed. Labels change with almost every update of the standards, so keep up. EL42 and EL005, the Standards Committee's responsible for our renewable energy standards, have been working hard over the years to harmonise labelling requirements across all of the renewable energy standards and to line up with ASNZS 3000. So life should be getting easier. None of this mismatching between different standards of what the label requirements are. Anyway, let's dive into it because it is a tech quickie. Labels. Shutdown procedure, no change. Keep it short and simple. Multiple supplies, IES. This sign is required at the fire panel and it should be a sign indicating the location of the IES shutdown procedure. So emergency services know how to turn the system off. Isolation of the inverter will not be de-energized. Now this is basically um, indicating that just turning off the inverter doesn't make it fully safe. You've still got perhaps in the case of solar live cables. Warning multiple supplies, isolate. So this should be at the DB that the IES directly connected and the isolate should indicate uh, how to isolate. Now, here comes the fun part. A whole bunch of new switch labels. Main switch inverter, no change, yahoo. This is the main switch for the inverter system. Main switch grid, no change, woohoo. Here comes the changes. Main switch alternative. Now this would be what we often would think of as a backup supply uh, in a hybrid inverter. Main switch independent. You'll have to check the tech quickie to understand all those supply types, what is an independent supply. I'm not gonna go over it again here. Main isolator, grid. This is at the DB that the IES is directly connected. So it may not be the main switchboard, but it will have a main isolator for that DB and it should indicate that it's supplied by the grid. If you've got an independent supply, you need an isolator for grid input. Remember independent supplies uh, do not parallel with the grid. They only use the, the grid as an energy input source. And those uh, inverters need to be tested to 4777 part two, appendix M. Warning, multiple supplies located at, and this needs to be on the main switchboard and at the DBs. So not just the DB that the inverter is connected to, but intermediary, intermediary DBs. You're gonna need a site plan, but the good news is <laughs> it can be the same site plan that you use uh, for 5033 compliance. So the plan should show the location of the IES uh, at the main switchboard. Inverter AC isolator, nothing changes here. Adjacent to the inverter, you're gonna require an isolator uh, and it's gonna have a label saying uh, inverter AC isolator. And if there's more than one, number one, number two, number three, etc. Warning, multiple mode inverter. This is applicable for both alternative supply mode uh, uh, inverters as well, and it's required at the main switchboard and at the DBs. Energy source isolator, and energy source needs to indicate what the energy source is. So for instance, you'll have solar DC isolator, which is pr pretty much the standard one. You might have a hydro system, and it might actually be wild AC. So hydro AC isolator, see? It's gotta have energy source and type. So energy source, solar, type DC, and it's an isolator. Now lastly come two more big green disks. Yep, <laughs> we're gonna have so many green disks to throw around. Uh, 100 millimeters, that's gonna be pretty much the standard going forward. Uh, reflective, so it can be seen on approach. It needs to indicate what the energy source is. And in the case of solar, it'll just say solar. So big green disk with the word solar. A big green disk with the words wind. Big green disks with the words hydro. <laughs> so first responders know what sort of energy they're dealing with. And lastly, <laughs> if you've got an EV that's capable of vehicle to grid or vehicle to load, it needs to have a sign saying EV. So big green disk, the letters EV, and that's all. But only if it's a reverse power transfer device, not a, a standard EV charger. So once again, a plug for Jeff Bragg's CBD courses at the Smart Energy Council's website and sign up for that Smart Installer program and get free registration and free access to over 15 essential standards. It's just such a good deal. Anyway, show me some love. 
give us a thumbs up, subscribe so you'll be notified of new content as soon as it comes out. Anyway, thanks for watching. Check it. Hey, hey.